Anyway, let's get straight into this free three part question from Squid Tooth. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's got to be a Dr. Abs follower with that name, isn't it? Uh, here's a three part question, or she does. I don't know who that is. is After derma rolling, and uh, Abs, if you don't mind talking about derma rolling for people who don't know what that is, once we get into sure. the question, should I clean my face with an alcohol wipe or is it not recommended? Okay, so <clears throat> after derma rolling, first of all, let me jump to the first with the derma rolling. For those that don't know, you're using a derma roller, which I don't have one with me here, um, but I'm sure you can Google it and figure out what it is. It's basically a barrel with some needles on the outside, and then it kind of rolls across your skin. Uh, and the point of this is when done appropriately, appropriately and it's done safely, it's done you know, in a way that's correct for that particular person, you can actually use this to create micro trauma to your skin in the same way that going to the gym causes micro trauma to the muscle fibers. Now, the gym isn't deleterious for your health because small amounts of trauma can be stimulation as opposed to damaging. And it's the same thing here. It's a very small amount of trauma. In fact, you can't even see the puncture. It's that tiny. But what it does is allows the body to recognize it and it can actually create uh, collagen stimulation to some extent. And it can have effects such as thickening the skin, improving the skin uh, elasticity, um, improving the skin's firmness and resilience, um, all these fancy words that people like to use without being too complicated. And it can even help in certain ways for things like pigmentation, for example. You, you have to be very careful how you use it for collagen versus pigmentation, but that's that's a lecture for another day. In fact, I have videos on both of my channel if you're interested. But sorry, you're about to say something, Stephen. I'm not going to say anything. I'm smiling oh. at you. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> I will so, be in a minute. Yes. <laughs> so the, the the key to making sure you're safe at home is making sure that one of the things is, is that everything is clean and, and sterile if possible. So you want to make sure that before you derma roll, your skin is clean very effectively. If, if you haven't been going out anywhere and covering yourself in sweat from cycling all day and things like that, and you've just been relaxing at home, there's nothing really built up on your skin. A bit of a rinse with water should be absolutely fine. If you're concerned about other things on your skin, you can use a gentle cleanser, many on the market, you don't have to spend a lot of money, and then you can derma roll. And then once that's done, then the key is not just to clean your face, but also to clean the derma roller. So I know the question is asking about cleaning the face, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about both. So when you're cleaning your face, um, you don't need to do a huge amount. Um, you can just, if you if you are going to put skincare on, you can just put your skincare on straight away because the derma roller itself, we're assuming it's clean when it's being used. And we're assuming your skin is clean before you've started. Unless you've cleaned your skin, ha have a sterile derma roller, you've then done it on your face and then roll around in the mud, there shouldn't be a need to immediately worry about some some big cleansing routine post derma rolling so your face should be clean because it was clean to start with and the derma roller was um if you're going to clean off maybe some drops of blood not that there should be uh, massive amounts of blood at all but if there's a couple of drops here and there nothing wrong with taking a little bit of warm water and just rinsing it off with that that's absolutely fine in terms of the derma roller itself you've got a couple options you can either just dunk it in some boiling water for a minute or so uh, in, a, in a cup or um, a little bit easier what I also do is I, I give it a bit of a, a rinse under the tap um, hot water if I can and then what I'll do I will flick the barrel so you've got a handle that's quite long a bit like a pen if I, don't, if I have a pen around here somewhere okay here we go so there's a handle that's quite long and then there's a barrel on the end which spins in this direction that my finger is doing on screen for those of you watching this on video and not audio all you do is you flick the barrel so it's spinning and as it's spinning i will spray the isopropyl alcohol spray which is what i use so it covers the entire barrel as it's spinning and that will then sterilize uh the barrel and then i will then make sure once that's sterile the the, the case that the roller comes in i will actually spray the inside of the case with the same isopropyl alcohol so that's nice and sterile and then i'll put it inside so the entire environment that the the roller is stored in is sterile at all times um and you know i've 
been doing this for a very long time. I've never had an issue. I've never had a patient have an issue. Um, it's it's really not as dangerous as clinics will have you believe, in my personal opinion. Um, it's in the, I think it's in most clinics' best interest to make you think it's extremely dangerous so that you then pay them to do it. Frankly, that you know, that's let's be honest, that's how the industry actually works. Uh, I'm surprised not more people speaking out about it. But that should be a good guide as to how you, you maintain cleanliness and sterility throughout the whole process. I hope that's answered the question, uh, Squid Tooth. Well, it uh, it goes on to the, the three parts. The second part is can, sure. derma roll, can derma rolling help the loose skin under the jawline, which is a nice little segue for me to say uh, I was on No Carb Life's um, channel last week and someone did not believe I was 60. You might have seen my reel about this, but anyway, and said I must be 40. And uh, if not, then I must have had cosmetic surgery. Now, what's this got to do with this question? Can derma rolling help the loose skin under the jawline? Well, I've got loose skin under the jawline. And if I'd have paid for cosmetic surgery, these jowls, I would have got rid of. I tell you, I have no problem with cosmetic. If I had the money to have cosmetic surgery, I would have it. And I'll tell you, it'd be that simple. But I haven't. So, and here's the punchline to this. If you haven't got the money for that, then you've got to do the best you can do. My best is to do carnivore, to do some activity, get out in the sun and uh, not drink things that are bad for me and not smoke. And uh, that's it, really. So now I am actually a person that listened to Dr. Abs and started derma rolling. So I will tell you, because <laughs> when I get to my jowls, oh, I derma roll like a good one. So I, I think that, um, firstly, I listen to Dr. Abs because he's fantastic. And secondly, it's something I'd never even considered. So even though I'm five and a half years into carnivore, we still learn every single day. You meet a new person, you hear something, it makes sort of sense, and you think, I'm going to try that. Uh, so keep your wits about you with everything. And then the third part of the question is, have you started doing the rolling yet? Yes. And if so, what size needles did you get? I simply got the one that Dr. Ab sent me a link for, which I believe is one millimeter. I think most people <clears throat> will be in that ballpark with, mm. with regards to the size of the needle. The difference comes to the area of skin under the eye. And I mean, immediately under the eye. So if you were to feel your cheeks, okay, and your jaw and your chin and your forehead, there's, there's some level of thickness to the skin. It's not exactly the same everywhere, but it's, it's some level of thickness. Then if you suddenly get the skin immediately under the eyelashes, it's ridiculously thin compared to everywhere else. And you will feel on your cheeks, and I'm, I'm doing this on camera. I, I apologize to the people who are what you're listening to this on the way back uh, on, on, on the, on the audio version um but i'm, I'm feeling putting my fingers on the front of my cheeks either side of my nose and then slowly moving them up towards my eye <clears throat> as you do that you will feel a junction okay where it goes from thin to thick or thick to thin that is what we call the lid cheek junction okay now the thin side of that junction that that skin is where there will be a complete reduction in needle size because the skin is is completely reduced in terms of thickness the skin there is on average is going to be around 0.1 millimeter depending on which scientific paper you'd like to read or which measurement you make on on your or someone else's face because it's only 0.1 it would be stupid to do a one millimeter length in something like that because you're going to go into fat pads and things like that you're going to cause trauma as opposed to stimulation which is why needling works it's stimulation not trauma so you have to reduce that um length in that region as to exactly what you reduce it to it does depend to some extent based on that person and, and their appearance and things um i can get, only give you a range and it's a big range you know even if you're at one end of this range it could still cause you issues because you need to be at the other end and it's impossible to say without seeing you so take this with a pinch of salt but it would be something along the lines of, let's say, somewhere between 0.1 and maybe 0.25, possibly 0.3 in, in, in really thicker skins, like Far Eastern skins, Asian skins, something like that. Uh, whereas everywhere else, again, rough ballpark might be a millimeter for most people. But again, you do need a consultation to get an absolute perfect answer for you individually. Great. That's a really good answer. Thank you very much. 